so what we're going to do in today's video is I'm going to run you guys through the SV100A, which is the whole body wireless uh, vibration analyzer from Svantec. So like its uh, previous instrument, the SV106 hand arm and whole body, the SV100A is a completely wireless, self-sufficient instrument. So as you can see, really lightweight, you put it under the seat of the operator or on the backrest of the operator. The instrument itself comes in an optional carry case like so to make transporting nice and easy. You'll get a factory certificate with it, a warranty card and also softwares on the CD. If you purchase a unit or hire a unit from AccuVid, you will get NADA certificates with it as well. We also have a strap to mount the sensor to the seat. We have some powering adapters for overseas and also Australia and then also a mains power supply. Inside here is a download cable, so this is how you charge the unit and how you download the data. Using the mains power and or to your laptop, you can do vice versa. I'm going to give you a bit of a run through on the, on the instrument's navigational buttons, and then I'll show you how to apply it and do a quick measurement. Alright, so as mentioned, we have four navigational directional buttons on the SV100A. These are the only buttons that you can use as an operator or a user. To start off, the bottom right button is an on switch. So if we just hold that on for a couple of seconds, the instrument's going to power on. It's going to tell us the firmware that the instrument is running as well. So already we can straight away see what firmware it's running. Now we're going to go into a number of different display menus. So to change these menus, all you need to do is press that same button. So it's going to rotate through a number of displays. Now these displays, you can see, you can change the different parameters, that sort of thing. So for example, we're on some instrument information menu here. If we just press down, you can see that it scrolls down through that display. So Bluetooth is off, the language is English, the time is off, that sort of thing. If we use the right arrow, it's going to rotate back up. So let's press the next file. So as you can see, no results are stored. So we haven't pressed start on a measurement yet. When we do, we will be able to see that there's a file L1, for example. This screen here is primarily basically what a lot of people want to see or just have visually if they ever need to see it live on the screen, calibration per purposes, that sort of thing. Obviously, if you're sitting on it, you're not going to be able to see it. The screen will lock itself as well so the operator can't stop the measurement. But as you can see, you have X, Y, Z. You've got your AW, which is an RMS value for vibration with whole body. And then what we can do to start a measurement, we press the two top buttons. So as you can see here, there's a play and a stop icon. If we press those two together, it's going to tell us that the keyboard is locked. So basically, once you start a measurement, the keyboard will lock itself automatically. To unlock that, the default is going around in a, in a clockwise direction. So we just start at the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, and that unlocks our measurement. Now, as you can see, there's a little line running across the bottom. So we know that the instrument is running we can already change these displays. So we've got X, Y, and Z changing on the bottom. We've got VDV, we're not interested in that. We want AW results, C, dose results, that sort of thing. As you can see that that measurement is still running to stop it, press these two buttons together. And then that means you can connect it to your PC. You can't connect while it's running a measurement. In regards to locking the screen itself, if you hold the top left button, that will be a hard lock for the instrument as well. So as you can see, the keyboard is locked and I stopped the measurement, so the measurement has stopped now. So there's sort of two ways of locking it, either start a measurement or you can hard lock it yourself. So basically, once you've opened up the Svan mobile app or Svan Assistant app um, and you've connected it via Bluetooth and the Bluetooth settings of the phone, you'll see a number of your instruments that are available to be connected. So as you can see, my 100A is turned off. So a nice little feature is you can turn on the instrument remotely. So for example, if someone's sitting on it already or the job's already started, you can turn it on remotely. So as you can see, that's powering on the instrument itself. So this is just using Bluetooth connectivity. And as you can see, we've already started up our instrument. So if we just tap on this once again, it's gonna open up the visual displays that we have available in Svan Assistant. It's gonna tell us the battery percentage, how much memory is left on the SD card, is the operator wearing it, for example. So now it's just gonna load into the visual displays of the instrument. So like we showed you previously, you can see the live displays on your phone as you could see on the instrument. So straight away we have current exposure, exposure A8, so for an eight hour day. If we rotate our hand across, we can see summary results, X, Y, and Z time history. We can change that to VDV. 
And as I said, AW is an RMS result, so instantaneous. If we keep going, we have time history. This is where you can select different parts um, of whatever terrain you're driving over, for example, dirt road, turns, speed humps, that sort of thing. Now, as I said, we can start this remotely. So if we just pop open that little drop down, we can press start on the instrument. So let's just have a look. It says measurement in progress. If we just tap our screen now, this should lock the screen, which is what we talked about earlier. So you don't want anyone sort of affecting the measurements while you guys are going. So I think that is a hard lock. If I look, if I hold that button, as you can see, it's locked. Um, the operator can't change it. As mentioned, we have time history. We also have a great feature in this. Basically, it's a map using Google Maps through the Android phone. So wherever this goes with the Android phone, we can download that later. So you know your truck driver's driving around, you wanna see where he's gone, that sort of thing. This is where the GPS data will be saved into the Android or using the Android phone and then the data will be in the instrument later. So there's lots of different options here. Um, all, um, interchangeable, we have time history and summary results. So just quickly, if I know that X direction is here, if I just pick this up, for example, and I just shake the X direction, you can see already that that X direction is gone really large numbers. So we know that the instrument is responsive to each axis. After the map, we just have some file information. Um, and that's pretty much about it using the instrument. So the last part would be just stopping it. Once again, you can pause as well. For example, if you didn't want to stop the whole measurement. Um, and that's really what the Svan Assistant app is all about. All right, so once you've set up the instrument, you've connected it to Bluetooth, you're ready to start your measurement, your driver's in his truck, or crane loader, bob digger, all of that sort of stuff. What we're gonna do now is just show you how to apply this seat pad to the seat of the user. What comes with the instrument is a strap here, basically like a seat belt. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna thread it through the designated slots here that Svantec have offered. So what we can do, we can just slide this underneath. It's pretty much two ways it can go. You can go the strap across the screen or under the screen, both don't really matter. What you can do is just pull it through and then you're going to have to mount this socket back on as well. So what we can do is just pop it through here, standard, standard sort of seatbelt stuff. So like that. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this chair as an example. What we have, let's do it to the base of the chair first. Now, as previously mentioned, we have X, Y, and Z axes on the instrument itself. So if you were, you can put this any way you want. You can face, let's just leave it simple. Let's do X facing forward. So for example, we're going through the data later on and we know that X, that is the direction that the driver is going. Now it's just standard stuff. You just, you know, put it in like a seat belt and then you do it up nice and tight. So this is where we can just adjust it, make sure that the driver is comfortable using it as well. He shouldn't really feel too much because it's a really ergonomically well-designed seat pad. So if we slide that across. And as you, see, as you can see, it's nice and secure. So we wanna make sure that that's really tight and it's not gonna move around much. So once the driver sits down, it's nice and secure. Now the same thing applies for the backrest. There's a simple setting in the software, which I'll show you guys soon, but basically you can set it. Is it on the seat surface or is it on the seat back of the operator? So we can do that setting, um, that setting pretty easily in the SVAN software. So for example, once again, you're concerned about the operator's, um, the operator's driving styles, for example. We just pull it through, tighten it up on the back. And then basically, there you go, sitting like that. It feels good. There you go.